Hi, salam and peace. This is your podcast, quote unquote, Black Woman Speaks Arabic, breaking the stereotypes and the stigmas around, quote unquote, Black women, Black Muslim women, and native Arabic speaking Black women. This is season two and episode five. The topic of today's episode is Black Mompreneurship how to let go to move forward. My name is Matsudiso. I'm a TCK and Arabic happens to be my second language. Today's guest happens to be a mompreneur. She helps, uh, well, I'm going to let her introduce herself actually. Why don't you go ahead, sister? <laughs> sure. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. I'm really, really grateful to be here um, on this podcast. And I really, I'm really excited that you have created this platform to really showcase um, women who are black women and showing everyone in the world more about how just kind of breaking stereotypes in and around the Arabic language and just giving us an opportunity to share our voice and express what we do with others. So I appreciate you. you. Thank you again. You. Yes. Okay. Um, so just yeah, go ahead. Should I just share? Sure. So um, just a little bit about myself. So my name is Michelle Ship, and I am a mompreneur, and I also am a business and mindset coach for newer mompreneurs who are just getting started in their business, and I help women start businesses online. I help them with building it, with scaling it and taking their very simple, like from their very business idea that they have in their mind to a full fledged online business um, with helping them attract their first customers, um, scaling their products and services and helping them build their business without the hustle. Um, as all of us moms are building a business alongside kids. So just helping them do that in the nooks and crannies of their busy day. So that's what I do. And I've been in business and mindset coach now for the past four years and been an entrepreneur for the past 10 years while raising my children, um, four girls. Now they're ages from 10 to 19 years old. Oh, wow. Bless. That's a little bit about me. <laughs> that's quite a journey. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Bless you. <laughs> so how did your, how did you, your journey start? What, what, what was the spark? What motivated you to get going on that journey? Sure. So I believe the spark was when I was laid off my job that I had. I used to work in human resources. And um, after working for so long, I was feeling very frustrated with not being able to spend time with the children then I was laid off, which was more of a blessing in disguise. And it helped me just really tap into, think about what do I really want to do going forward? Um, at that point in time, my kids were very little. I knew I wanted to have more children as well. And I was thinking about how am I going to continue to earn an income, have a career, but do it, do it alongside children, multiple children. And so I started exploring um, work at home opportunities where I can work um, for an employer. However, that even that was like a lot of it was very limited as well. Um, and there wasn't a lot of legitimate opportunities out there. However, I bumped into other women who started online businesses at the time. This was 10 years ago. And so I think the trend was just up and coming at that point in time with women actually starting businesses, working at home. Mm -hmm. So I joined... Um, I got started, a friend of mine who was also a mom, she was a homeschooling mom, and she told me about entrepreneurship and working in the industry called network marketing, or they call it direct sales. And she told me about it. And I just say, okay, there's nothing to lose, just more to gain. And it, I was looking for an opportunity to contribute to the family income, uh, but also to be able to say yes a bit more to the children. Um because we were very tight on money. We only had one income when I was laid off and I wanted to, I wanted them to go to the private preschools. I wanted to be able to just buy things when I wanted to. And I wanted to do that on my own terms. So I stepped into network marketing, being an entrepreneur, um, working with a company and selling their services. Um, and I did that part-time for many years um, until I grew up quite a bit of a following on social media and learned that's when I learned everything about being an entrepreneur from the beginning marketing stages 
to um, how to promote new products, services online, launching, um, how to close sales, um, but also just really how to build a team and how to motivate other women and help them build their businesses as well. So with that journey, I was able to grow into a full-time income. However, it wasn't overnight. I took many days working late at my computer while nursing a baby in between that while potty training as well and just going through the learning curves of how to set up websites, email marketing and after four years I was able to build a full-time income with that business which I was really grateful for and I was really looking for a way to show I have four girls just to show them what's possible and that as a woman you still can be a very active participant mother in the household who's still doing the cooking helping them with their school but also successful at holding down a career and it was really really important for me to be that first positive influence for the children and being able to give them more opportunities with their education their school um, providing like little things for them um, without feeling stressed and like on a pinch financially for the household. So that's why I got started more so to create more financial freedom for myself, um, contrib- contrib- contributing to the household and just really being a good example for the children and showing them what's possible. Lovely. It's very inspiring to hear that. Thank you. You're welcome. So um, when I came across you, what brought my, what caught my eye was um, your colors. I really love your colors um, Mm -hmm. and how you demonstrate your authority in your in your field and you have already mentioned how how you, you you gradually built that until you managed to succeed in creating a um, an income that you wanted. Mm-hmm. And I also love the way that you dive into the topics that you tackle. You really do uh, deep dives. And I love, um, I love deep dives of, as opposed to um, touching uh, the surface. And um, I like the fact that you're a black sister in action. So it really <laughs> is a positive representation of a black sister, a black Muslim, um, which is sometimes, uh, if not often a time, lacking in mainstream media. So what do you feel are perhaps the challenges? So we have the black female entrepreneur, we have the black Muslim entrepreneur, Mm -hmm. and then we have the the mompreneurs in general. How do you feel each one of those are facing challenges as uh, entrepreneurs mm-hmm. uh, in terms of being able to bring integrity and positive representation in mainstream media? Mm-hmm. Yes. Well, I think just being, um, first of all, I think there's there's the layer of just being a woman who is, um, who has, who's, who's unapologetically going after financial freedom and independence. Um, whereas women just for over the years were, were represented as someone who just stays at home, takes care of the kids. Um, so I really feel that being a woman in this industry is pretty powerful. Um, and it's, it's, it's giving light and showing to everyone what's possible. Um, and that we're not just meant to just stay home and cook and clean and things like that, or, And we're not only just meant to work outside of the home doing specific jobs that are catered to quote unquote women, um, but we also can build a like a powerhouse business online and be hold leadership in that role as well. So I really feel like there's now we're in 2023. There's so much more of that out there. However, when I started back in 2012, there wasn't as much. It was just it was just kind of taking off a little bit at that point in time. So there's not so much hindrance there. However, what I do feel it still needs to be worked on is just being a black woman as a mompreneur, but also the other layer of being a Muslim black woman as a mompreneur. Um, being a black woman as a mompreneur definitely has um, lots of um, like there's not much rep- representation out there. 
um, especially in the coaching industry. Um, there is when it comes to um, things around fashion or beauty products or things like that. But when it comes to women coaching, which kind of goes along the lines of teaching and empowering others, um, there's not much there, unfortunately. And one of the reasons I'm feeling that maybe that's not so much out there is because sometimes women don't f- uh, do not feel uh, because of the way society's set up. Sometimes there's just black people thinking they're not worthy or somebody's feeling or they're not feeling like their words would be uh, really acknowledged in that space um, and, and holding like leadership there. So I feel like because of just black people may feel like whatever their words are and teaching others may not be really understood or um, what is what is the word like? Um, like people won't take them seriously. So they choose to kind of like move away that type of industry. However, if it's more of like clothing or like brands or like uh, shoes and makeup, that's just a bit more acceptable socially. So as a black woman stepping up, not even a black man, but as a black woman, I feel like we should show more people of what's possible and that we don't only have to be in that space of the material things, but we can definitely work on ourselves inwardly by teaching and empowering and lifting people up so that we're on a different level and not just looking, um, being kind of superficial. But with coaching, you're really digging, getting to the core and the heartbeat of what's going to elevate someone's life through working on their mindset or helping them dive deep into um, personal, not personal, but professional freedom, financial freedom, and having that ability to not have to lean on an employer. So I really feel like that needs to be worked on more. Um, So like have more ability to speak about that more. Now being a Muslim black woman, um, I don't feel like there's much representation there as well, because when you are a Muslim woman, um, traditionally, it's it's really acceptable or kind of the quote unquote norm of women just, you know, staying at home to catering to the family, the household and our spouses. Um, however, nowadays, I really feel that we as women, as Muslim black women have to break that type of stigma because we're not really representing what true Islam is about. And we, where we also have examples from the Sierra of women holding really good, powerful positions um, in leadership um, for, for villages and nations and However, I think culture has kind of watered that down over the years where we're just sitting back and, but there's, but there's, but we're also overlooking the, the Mm. baraka that's, that's also provided once you start doing beyond that. So our jobs are not only just for the household, but we also can lead others through having a coaching business, through having any type of business that offers a product or service, contributing to the household, but also it helps build us up as well as women, as black Muslim women, and it helps us have um, create more you know, skill sets that we can pass on to our children. And like I was mentioning earlier, having our children see us as like, I feel like women, Muslim black women are like the nucleus to the household. So we're giving them a really good, strong example from the very beginning of their upbringing of how they too can have their life. Um, and that was one of my driving forces when I got, when I got started. So there's, it's lots of layers of challenges. Um, and when I identified a lot of these upon getting started, I just said I just needed to create my own space, my own platform, um, and really express my voice unapologetically as a Black Muslim woman. 
And then with that, I think a lot of people came to fall because also when you're a black Muslim woman, <clears throat> you'll see that there's other areas like other in the coaching business, in the coaching world, you'll see that there are groups such as like maybe the um, the, the Arab Muslims or there would be the Southeast Asian coaches, but there's not many black Muslim coaches that are women. And so... I feel, I feel like I'm one of the few that hold that status, but it also provides those who want to do the similar same thing or those who are needing help and guidance but feel comfortable with someone that's, that they could relate to or it looks like with them, looks like them. It gives them that space and just say, yes, I, I can do this as well. So many, many things, many challenges along the way. Mashallah, thank you for being one of the few black Muslim uh, mompreneurs out there. So um, when you look around you and you see the few of um, the mompreneurs, black mompreneurs who are putting themselves out there, how do you feel they are succeeding in pushing themselves uh, out there, uh, putting themselves out there with integrity? How do you feel? that is succeeding in terms of the um, inner um, black Muslim community, the Muslim community, and then outside the Muslim community? There's still lots of work. Um, we're just scraping the surface. I haven't seen much progress at all, to be very honest. And the only time, like for me, for example, sometimes when there's different events like online summits and events locally going on in your city about being a, a mompreneur, it will be held with all the speakers are, are of one ethnicity. Um, and there's not much invitations, even though they, they'll say like it's a very diverse or like International Women's Day, but it'll be just one group of people. So I really feel that being a black mompreneur, we have to be able to get out of our own way and invite ourselves to those summits and platforms to be the representation. And so that when attendees see and attend it, they see that there's more to just being a mompreneur than looking like this one individual person. And so one of my former coaches, I was very grateful for her. She really embodied that phrase, like everyone is welcome here, quote unquote. And she was one of the first ones who invited me to an, to a summit. It was like a two or three day summit, a live in person one where I could, where I could speak on her stage to her audience, who was predominantly Caucasian. However, that was a, a very pivotal opportunity, and um, to and it was really showcasing to other people, like, mm -hmm. hey, you know, just because I'm different, um, I can speak along the same mm -hmm. lines as you, or maybe even better in some areas, and I could connect with people that look just like me, but I can make a connection with people who are like mm -hmm. you. So I was really grateful that she gave me that opportunity. That was a couple years back, and um, and I just attended another summit this week, where um, again, um, well, not predominantly, it was pretty diverse, um, but I say there's definitely more Caucasian. But I strategically look for opportunities to be in spaces where there there's not much diversity, just to make a point, but also um, just to build my own brand and also feel more confident around others who are maybe looking a little bit different than myself. Now, as far as other black mompreneurs, I, I try not to look outside of my, my lane. I kind of stay in my lane and, and kind of focus on what I'm doing, not so much what others are doing online. But for the few other black mompreneurs that I do see online in the USA or in the UK, they're doing fantastic. Um, however, I do feel that they are still only focusing on or maybe because they just feel limited or, um, to only focus on clients and customers that are just like them. However, I feel that my message can be conveyed and implemented by anyone. <clears throat> and I, 
and I and I feel like that's just really a part of my brand. And I want to make sure that people know as a business and mindset coach that being a mompreneur, um, we have more in common than we do differently. Um, whether you're Muslim or you're not Muslim or you're black or you're not black. And, but it just seems like the ones that gravitate towards me are people who look very similar to me because they're very comfortable. Um, so yeah, so that's what I have to share on that. Okay, so you did mention about the some of the challenges that you went through as you were building um, your um, yourself as a mompreneur, having to potty train and nurse while you're on the laptop, etc., and juggle between the house chores and being that positive representation for your children. So what other challenges did you feel that you had to face within your career as a mompreneur that you have now overcome? Sure. Um, So I would say one of the ones that came up very, very quickly, I would say probably within the first year, is called imposter syndrome or comparisonitis, I like to say, uh, because I've seen other women who are mompreneurs who were doing things a lot faster. Um, I wanted that fast, instant results of gaining more customers and building my paychecks a lot quicker. And I often looked within and saying, what's wrong with me? Am I not good enough? How can she do this so much better? Or her her website looks so much better than mine. Or what is she saying or doing that's different? Like maybe what's wrong with me? Am I a problem? So imposter syndrome is something that crept up within me a lot within that first year and even into the second third year and sometimes it does occasionally now but not so much Um, I think I just I just become a lot I became older wiser more confident Um, and I've also learned like I mentioned earlier to stay in my lane and to know that everyone's journey is different and everyone comes to the table with their business with different skill sets different um different amount of things on their plate that they have to juggle. I came in with four children and the youngest one was a newborn baby. So I just started when my, when my, my, my youngest one was only a couple of months old. Oh wow! And then I had, (laughs) yes. So she was little still in the car seat. And then the, then I had the two year old who was in the diaper potty training. She was a hot mess running everywhere. And then I had a six year old. (laughs) Yes. She thought it was funny. Uh, ripping her diaper off and I'm trying to like sit her down and all the things and then the six-year-old who was in kindergarten or first grade so I had to drive her to school and I started my business in the winter time so it was cold I had diaper bag car seat little ones at tow then my oldest one was eight years old so four kids under eight um at that time um uh, I, d- I didn't have much help at that time and I, it was just a lot and I was and I was postpartum hormonal all the things but I had what drove me is just to keep going I definitely need to do this for them we needed to build our income but I had that learning curve of just learning everything so because I was looking at other people's progress and seeing that I wasn't progressing as quickly as them it frustrated me many many times where I almost wanted to give up um if sometimes someone would would um join my team so in network marketing there's two ways of building you have a team that you're building where you help other women get started their business help them launch but then there's also the side where you're actually selling the actual services so there was two ways of making money and sometimes you'll have people join the team but then they'll stop and they'll drop out and then so you're just like you take one foot one step forward and another step back. And so it was a lot of back and forth and it would be really frustrating. Um, But I had to learn that everyone were... My sincere apologies, dear listeners. We had a technical difficulty whilst recording, but if you are curious about what Michelle had to learn, please do reach out to her via the social media contacts provided in the description box below. This episode will be available on Spotify, Acast, and on YouTube. My name is Matt Sadiso, and I'm a TCK, and Arabic happens to be my second language. I provide safe spaces for black women at the start of their Arabic learning journey including getting Afro-Arabic creative and promoting embarking on a healing journey. If you're curious about what Afrobics design 
are like, please head off to my website, bintahawadesigns.com. That's B-I-N-T-H-W-A-A-Designs.com. For resources and courses, please head off to the details box below. Okay, so moving on to the last question. So I understand that you did a 12-week mastermind that, and this was last summer, I believe, yes. that included um, a forgiveness exercise. So could you tell us more about that mastermind? Sure. And um, I believe there's an element of how to let go and release and move forward. Yes. Yeah. Sure. And uh, if you can also tell us why it's important to release and let go and move forward, why is it even important? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. So um, one of the programs that I usually run either once or twice a year, it's called the Accelerator Mastermind. And I launched it again this just past summer of 2022. And when I first launched it, when I was first creating it, I was thinking about doing it for 12 weeks. However, I quickly learned after getting it out there that 12 weeks is a long time to commit for busy mompreneurs uh, for the summer. So I quickly condensed it to six weeks, uh, but normally it's a 12 week mastermind. And so within the mastermind program, um, I go over the five steps for, for transformation as a mompreneur um, and there's like different content pillars um, so I as a business and mindset coach I first teach the women about how to have a stronger mindset so that they could show up more po powerfully and more competently as well in their business so we go over mindset so I call it the five M's so first one is mindset uh, after we go over diving deep into like their subconscious mind and learning more about their conscious mind and how they can just overcome any self-limiting beliefs. Um, and I talk about forgiveness as well there. Then we jump, jump into uh, getting into motion, how to take, what are the first steps with, the, with like getting into motion with your business, with launching it. Um, then we talk about how to keep up with our motivation. Um, we talk about gaining momentum as well with the motivation. We talk about how to become more magnetic to attract more of the high caliber clients and customers that we want that are like raving fans of what we're offering and how to convert them from just someone who's a warm lead to a hot lead who's ready to buy. And then we talk about money. We talk about money mindsets and how we could really transform how we think about money in order so that we can start attracting more money and thinking about how our mind plays a big part of the money that we're making. Um, either it's a lot or it's not a lot. So it's a lot of both business and mindset coaching that I do within that program. So we did it for six weeks. Um, I've learned that long courses in the summer is not the best thing to do. So I condensed it and it was definitely accelerated. Um, so within that, the first content pillar I was talking about is mindset. And even though a lot of the women thought they were signing up, uh, well, not thought, because they seen from the advertising was going to be about mindset and business, but a lot of women are focused on just the, the what do I need to do to build and how? Can you just show me how to build? And I was definitely going to give that strategy to them within the, the coaching, and that was more so around um, the motion and becoming magnetic and things like that. But before we could go there, we had to focus on our mind and how to learn how to let go of some barriers that may be preventing us from taking leaps and bounds in our business. So there's a three-step forgiveness process that I share within the mastermind to help women let go. Uh, I called it release and affirm. So first we had to really think about some of the things that may have happened in our lives prior to us starting our business um, for all the way from childhood and kind of take note of all the good, bad, in between, like significant uh, milestones and things that we're on the forefront of our mind that we're constantly thinking about, um, even subconsciously thinking about, like when we're sleeping. These are some of the worries that we may have. And, you know, after list listing it out, 
we a lot of those situations have people uh, that are involved with it as well. Um, so there may be a situation that may have happened or things people may have said to us or situations, you know, relationships that may have impacted us. Um, and once we're writing that out, we have to learn how can we kind of not ignore those situations, acknowledge it, but not give it so much significance where it's putting a complete halt on us moving forward with our lives. Um, one thing that I learned about moving forward easily and gracefully is that we have to learn to forgive others. And sometimes we don't because we feel that we're giving them justice, but, and like they're having the upper hand, but it's not, I feel that forgiveness is not about them, but it's more about us being able to move forward um, at rapid pace. So it's giving us a fresh start and knowing that situations happened in our lives and people have may have said things that may have hurt us or things that may have happened, but people do things and say things because that's the knowledge that they had at that point in time. And so, and they didn't know any better, you know, or they wouldn't, that wouldn't have happened. So we have to release and forgive that situation. Um, not just like forget about it, but like acknowledge it, but then forgive. And we used to write um, within that exercise, I asked like the ladies inside to write like forgiveness letters um, to to at least five people in their life that they may have felt that have hurt them at some way, you know, shape or, or, or form. And to take time to write out these forgiveness letters <clears throat> and not to actually give it to them, but to actually help within the healing of that situation and that relationship. And, um, and so with those forgiveness letters, you know, you're writing it out to them, um, and you're acknowledging, you know, this is what happened and this is why I feel bad. Um, but you know, from this day forward, I forgive you from that. I'm not going to let what you say, um, stop me from moving forward. I know you did the best with the knowledge and tools and understanding that you had at that point in time, but from now on, I'm going to move forward and be more, you know, powerful and empowered instead of letting me feel like a like a victim but instead more of a victor because you were able to overcome it and the reason why I say forgiveness is really really important for mompreneurs and something that we need to acknowledge because as everybody in their life has experienced some type of happening in their life despite um, the reason why we have to check it from the beginning of our business is because that situation is going to creep up many times if it's not resolved and we're not healed from it. And it's going to impact the amount of customers that we have, the, the, the ability to close customers. Like if you have a conversation with someone who wants, who's considering buying your products and services, but maybe you have a mindset about uh, like not feeling worthy. So you would not close, close that sale. You'll be a little bit shy around that. And it impacts ultimately our bottom line, the income that we make. Um, but also if something happened in the past where you're not feeling confident just about yourself, you will not show up and market properly when you're trying to launch a brand new product or service. So in order for us to really make a quantum leap in our business, forgiveness is something that we have to really acknowledge um, and move forward, like move past um, in order for us to really make big moves going forward. So after we did the forgiveness letters, in order to, now that we understood these are the situations that happen in our lives, these are the, um, um, we list them out, these are the people that we want to write forgiveness letters to, you write the letters. Um, then I told them just to toss it. Um, they could burn it, toss it, just, you know, let's just be done with that, that close that chapter. And then after you forgive, you have to then rebuild yourself. Um, and in the rebuilding is we have to then be, a, be our own biggest champion 
of our own, you know, of our own body, of our own self-worth and really do that. I call it mirror work. This is something that I learned from a former coach that used to work with me or in and around mindset and mirror, mirror work is really just, mm -hmm. um, speaking positively, um, to your like inner child or just like to yourself to help you feel more confident and just doing a little bit of that every day and speaking to yourself in the mirror and speaking to yourself as if you're speaking to maybe like, um, like the younger version of you. Um, cause we want to make sure she's feeling strong, um, which will help us feel more empowered, um, in the place that we are in today. So mirror work we did there after the forgiveness exercise. And then, and the last piece of rebuilding ourselves up before we can actually get going with our business is, um, affirming. So doing affirmations, um, either affirmations that, are kind of generic or there's ones that can be um, intertwined with the Islamic values as well for my Muslim clients. So just really, <clears throat> really being able to own our power um, and really being able to uh, articulate exactly the things that makes us strong, powerful, beautiful, and worthy um, so that we have, so that we have that inner worthiness of saying, yes, that I can, I can have a successful business too. I'm worthy of receiving, um, uh, income, but I'm also, um, confident that my products and services are going to be transformational for others. Um, so that just really builds us up as well. And without this forgiveness exercise and without doing this release and affirm, I really feel that women are going to be still stuck in the same place. And I feel like I'm one of the only, um, one of the few, not one of the only, one of the few coaches that integrates this mindset into their program. Um, and they, and some others, I know they just jump right into, okay, this is how you, how you need to market your business. The way you, this is what you need to say. This is how many times you have to post. And that's important. But women, if they don't internally feel that they have were able to heal from and um, move past situations that they dealt with in their lives ever since childhood, there's going to be no way for them to really hit their goals that they, that they say they want. It would just be more like lip service, but it would never actually come into reality. So definitely important. It's something that I, that I integrate into my mastermind every time at the very beginning. Um, that mastermind that I did, it was kind of an accelerated version, but when I do usually have the full 12 weeks, we dive deep into it for a couple of weeks because it does take time. And the women, I know they need help with writing the forgiveness letters, with wording, because it's actually specific wording that I tell them to include that's, gonna, that's really going to hit home and speak to their heart more so um, versus just being vague in the, in the forgiveness letter. So it takes time to thoughtfully write it out. Um, internalize and really just mentally move past and it takes a little time and it's something I don't want to rush. I rather solidify that. So they walk away from my mastermind feeling like, Oh wow. Like, like they felt built up. Um, so that even if they didn't get to all the different areas of the strategy part of the mastermind, at least I know they walked away with feeling like they own their business and that they're worthy of receiving, you know, having the, the successful business that they truly desire because they have that tool um, in their back pocket. Thank you for sharing that. I do have actually one more question. <laughs> so that was the second to last one. Okay, so for full transparency, my my uh, mompreneurship journey, it started when I was actually in a toxic um, environment. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was I was doing it all on my own. Mm -hmm. And um, what actually um, gave me uh, full purpose was actually um, when my marital experience ended up in divorce and my purpose completely just um it it took off it took off and my initial um mompreneurship um journey it changed uh, 360 degrees i was initially selling for um, another company 
and it didn't take off. And there was a big gap. Mm -hmm. And then um, after mm -hmm. my divorce, I actually started a whole new journey. And um, so with your mastermind mm. and you mentioning about how um, forgiveness, if we do not forgive and um, resolve issues that were born um, in our childhood, mm -hmm. it can often come up and prevent us yes. from moving forward in our business. Then what would you advise um, sisters, yes. um, particularly black sisters who are either at the start of their uh, mompreneurship journey or they are already in their mompreneurship mm -hmm. journey and not necessarily in a good place. It could be in right. a good place or not in a good place. What would you tell her? What would you advise her? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, so I would definitely advise her to not feel any resentment or like a grudge to the situations that, that have happened in her life because we all know that Allah is the best of planners and every situation that happens within our life and was, was put there for a reason. Now, we could sit there and say, you know, woe is me, why did this happen? And just feel so much like a victim. However, that situation that happened in your life that was either traumatic or just really, you know, got you worrying, there's lots of wisdom that we don't see. There's lots of light. And we sometimes, we need to connect with another person, another sister, a coach or someone to kind of help you flip the script and, and see a different perspective to shed light on what actually happened because that situation, whether it be a divorce or something, helped you start a new chapter in your life and may have kicked off like a brand new business or just a new way of showing up for your family. Um, so there is wisdom, there is good within that. Um, and I feel if we... If we're on the victim side, we're not really accepting Allah's plan. Um, no, we didn't know that situations are going to happen and play out like that because we have one plan. But again, we know Allah's the best of planners. And that was put in our way for a reason, that situation, whether good, bad or in between. And we have to just have to learn from it and not hold resentment or grudges because that, you know, we're here in this life to to grow. Um, not to stay stagnant. And what example are we giving to our children who are looking up to us when we're staying in that in that spot? Um, not saying that it's it's not okay to have those feelings, um, but how long can we hold those feelings? And it's doing more. It's not doing us any good if we're if we're if we're just staying in that spot and having all those feelings. Um, it kind of eats us away, you know, when we're stuck in that spot, mm -hmm. that hard spot. Thank you so much, Michelle. It was an honor, absolute honor. And I enjoyed listening to you and taking us on that journey. Um, today's episode was Black Mompreneurship, How to Let Go to Move Forward. If you would like to get in touch with Sister Michelle, I'll leave her contact details in the detail box. Thank you so much, Michelle. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me.